My friends, Eric Andres, your guitar sage here, and today we're talking about part two of the tasty go-to noodle notes, except today we're doing fifth string major chord roots. So fifth string root major chords, I should say. Okay, here's the deal. This is, as I said, in the minor chord one, this is a little discovery that I made on the fretboard myself where I just, I, I look at the fretboard enough and I say, man, that means this equals this equals this. And then boom, I give you a, some sort of little hack, you know? And again, I have never seen this in a book. I've read lots of books, taken so many guitar lessons and courses and watched so many videos and I've never seen this taught. So it's not that it's, that it's not out there. It's always been out there. It's just looking at something from a different view, if you will, okay? And so essentially what this video is going to do is it is going to, if we're staying within the, the bounds of diatonic harmony, which is harmony based upon the major scale, all rock and blues and jazz and country and everything that you listen to is within that realm, that diatonic realm, that which is based off of the major scale, even the modes, okay, would, would, would vibe on this. So essentially 99% of all the music that we're listening to is going to is going to fit into this sequence. So if you're st sticking in that sequence and not uh, borrowing ch chords, which I love to do by the way, but if you're not doing borrowed chords and that sort of thing, then this would work perfectly, okay? And it goes like this. The the chords in diatonic or major harmony uh, go major one, minor two, minor three, major four, major five, minor six, diminished seven. Three major chords, three minor chords, and that odd duck out, the diminished chord, which is number seven, okay? And so because of that, there's certain patterns that appear on the fretboard. And I'm getting ready to show you a pattern. It's the same pattern that I showed you for the minor. Well, it's, it's different. Same pattern as far as the dots, but we've got some major differences there. So we're going to be playing major chords instead of minor chords. And then the noodle notes will be a little bit different for a few of the notes, for a few of the notes, okay? So what the, the purpose of this video is to do is to, if you are in the confines of that diatonic harmony, what I want you to do is be able to, if you grab a chord, Okay, and I'm showing this, I'm going to be showing this to you with at least four chords, maybe five chords over this series. That if you grab this one particular type of chord, and I'm showing you the chords that you're going to be grabbing all the time, not some weird, you know, chords that you're never going to use. These are the chords that everybody's using, right? Then there should be notes that show up that you can play every single time that aren't within the chord, but that would accent that chord and create some noodle notes, Okay. Now, what I played for you just there is not going to change the world. It was literally just something I just threw together very quickly right before this video. I know you could tell. But just something that basically give you the, the idea that you can grab these notes almost out of thin air. Once I show this to you, you're not going to be able to forget it because really there's only one pattern, but it happens three times across the neck. Luckily for us, there's three minor chords. There's three major chords. So pretty much everything is in the confines of this, okay? So... Let's take a look. Uh, Mike, if you would please pull up this diagram. This is how we did it last time, and then I'm going to show you this, okay? Okay, so we're in the key of G, okay? So the third fret on the sixth um, st string there, right? You can see the sixth string is the one that's at the very bottom. And if you go three frets up, so there's the zero fret is, is the gray, and then that first blue dot at the second fret is the second fret, and then the third fret there is where we're looking at, okay? That's the tonic, okay? That is the tonal center. We're in the key of G, and if we play the major scale, it's gonna sound something like this. Okay, now all the other notes that you're seeing on that fretboard are nothing other than repeats of those seven notes. So even though there's lots of notes there, I don't know how many, but there's a lot of notes there. They're the same notes repeated over and over again in different ways, sometimes in different octaves and what have you. So don't get, a, go, get overwhelmed with it. And in fact, when you're looking at a map, if you thought you had to be in all the places at once, then yes, you would feel overwhelmed. But in fact, you can only be in one place at one time. So, as far as I know, so just be worried about the place that you're in. All right, life lesson in there. I'm sure you got that already. So here's the deal. So we're gonna be looking at one of these, but here's the deal. If you're looking at one of them, you're looking at all of them because it's all the same, okay? 
So all the dots that you see on the fretboard here are in the key of G, G, A, B, C, D, F sharp, G, okay? Now, the reason I picked the key of G is it's very easy for you to see just lined up like this, okay? Now, the way this works is, in the key of G, we have a G chord, we have a C, and we have a D, right? G, C, and D, that's the one, the four, and the five, and you probably know this, if you've seen any of my videos, those are the three chords that are used most in music, bar none. There are millions of songs written with just the one, four, five, and great songs at that. Okay, now, for the purposes of our diagram here, the one would be that purple one, okay? That purple bit there, that's G, okay? I'm playing that at the seventh fret, and the, the lines that you're seeing there are the actual chord. Uh, if you think about that, that's basically the C chord shape, and I'll show you that in just a minute. So what I'm saying is, any of those, do any of those dots are permissible to play within the key, okay? Those are the ingredients that make up the key, and so those are the, wor the ones that work together, kind of like color theory, right? There's certain colors that work well together. These notes work well together because they're in a specific key. So. Even though all the dots on this are permissible, what I wanted to do is I wanted to say, if I could teach my students that when they grab this one particular chord, there are certain notes that they can grab every single time, whether it's the one chord, the four chord, or the five chord, all the time, those notes are gonna be there. And guess what? I came up with this, and it's true. So, notice that the pattern for the purple, and the pattern for the blue, and the pattern for the mustard color here are all the same, not including the black dots because those aren't the colors I'm talking about. Those colors that I just mentioned, if you look at this, they're the exact same. There's nothing different about them, okay? If you add the black dots, it's something different, but we're not talking about that, just the colors. Now, why is that a big deal? That's a huge deal because if you know where those notes are at at all times, and it's not that hard because really you're talking about one note per string except for the sixth string, you've got two notes there. One note per string other than the actual chord that you're holding. So you can resolve to any one of those notes. And in fact, on that sixth string, we could include that other note there. I didn't, but, um, but in fact, it's a part of the chord as well. Don't worry about that. Okay, so here's the deal. Do not go to get overwhelmed with this because I'm gonna show you how this happened, how this works, okay? Now, before we go to it, we're gonna take a picture here in just a minute, okay? So get ready, I'm gonna pose with it and you can take a picture of it because you'll wanna have this. So get ready to stop and save it, okay? However you take a picture of your screen, take your phone, whatever. Take a picture of it because you're gonna need this for later. Now, what I'm saying is this, and in fact, I'm gonna go, keep the diagram up, Mike, if you would. Here I am, I'm at the, what fret is that? That's the seventh fret. I'm at the purple diagram there. And I'm putting, this is, I'm starting this chord on the fifth string. Right? And I'm playing the notes where the lines start and I'm going right up to the top. That's what feels like a C shape, okay? And I'll demonstrate that in just a minute. So what I'm saying is, if you are holding that shape, all the other purple notes are going to fit that chord perfectly and you can play with them, noodle with them, resolve them back to the chord. So I'm gonna start now on the top string, the first string, watch this. So I just resolve that down to the, to the uh, chordal note, and then I'm gonna do that on the second string, doing a little pull off, and then on the third string. And then for the fourth string, I'm gonna hammer up. And for the fifth string, I'm gonna hammer up. And then the last two notes, uh, I'm gonna pull down, or I'm gonna do a pull off to that, to that seventh fret there. Okay, so now another thing I want you to notice is every single one of those three patterns are the exact same. Make sure I got it right, I sure did. Every single one is the same. Now, when we go to the one chord, you've got all the same noodle notes as you would as if you were in the four chord, and you'll have all the same noodle notes than if you were in the five chord, okay? So here we go, we're getting ready to take a picture and then I'm going to explain it more. You ready? Get ready to snap that picture, here we go. Okay, cool. Now you have that, and now you got it for later, and you're not gonna be like, I wish you had it on the screen, and I can see your hands at the same time. Okay, but you can't. So we gotta remove it. Mike, get it out of here. 
All right, here we go. So now notice that again, what we're talking about is we're talking about the C major figure. So you know this, you know what this form looks like, right? C major chord, right? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to get, if you're not used to doing this, holding it like this, then hold it with fingers two, three, and four, because that's gonna allow you to free up that first finger so that you can take that chord and move it up the fretboard. Now, if you physically can't do this at the moment, and I say at the moment, because you will be able to do it if you practice. I've never seen somebody practice and not get something if they practiced enough. So that's the form we're looking at, but you can get this, okay? If you can't get it right now, you will get it. So that's the form. And here's my one chord, here's my four chord, Here's my five chord, come back to the one. Now the cool thing is, watch this, see this? There's a space in between, and then my four chord. Let me go back to this uh, one chord here. There's a space in between, and here's my five chord. What? Yeah, it's that easy. One, four, five, one. Now, the other really cool thing about this is we've got these other noodle notes. So remember when we're soloing or playing little melodies and what have you, it's best to resolve to the notes within the chord. So if you're gonna add a little flavor, a little spice, you don't, uh, you don't premiere the spice, you use it as an accent. So if you have whatever, a piece of chocolate cake and you wanna have um, some cayenne on it, you don't have a big cayenne pepper sitting on top of it. You might sprinkle a little teeny bit, tiny bit of cayenne in it because that's gonna make it good. It's not the main part, right? So again, the main part here of our little chocolate cake here is the chord and then the cayenne pepper is gonna be the other little notes that we're gonna wiggle around with and noodle around with. Uh, you make them sound good. You've got to figure that part out. I can just, sh I can lead you to the water. You got to, you got to find, you know, you got to drink it. So we got this chord here. So what I do is I think this is I think from the first string down, this is how you could practice this is you would want to, so I'm going to pull off to the note within the chord there, as I showed you in the diagram. And then I might pull off to this note. And then for this note, Right? This is all in the diagram I'm, sh I'm showing you. So the first three are pull-offs. And then these guys here, this is going to be a hammer-on. So I'm going to hammer on from the whole step below it. And then this guy would be one and a half steps below. And then these two are freebies, but this note technically is the five of the, of the chord. Just an octave lower. So... What does that mean? It means if I'm holding this chord and I want to kind of, I can do that. Now don't expect that you're going to be able to hold the entire chord and noodle at the same time. I have four fingers down. I can't noodle anything unless I'm getting this finger over here, right? So you've, you're not going to hold the whole chord down and noodle unless you have more fingers on your hands than the rest of us. Uh, so you're just going to have to do partial chords. So for instance, like right here. Whoops, here. A little Hendrixy stuff there, you know? Again, what's so cool about that is you just have to learn it one time, friends, and you'll have it for the one chord, the four chord, the five chord, and you'll have it in all the different keys. So this is something you do want to learn, okay? The learning curve on it, it's a little bit steep, right? It's going to take a little bit to get this, but once you do it, you've got it for the four chord, you've got it for the five chord, and then you just move it up and down the fretboard as per whatever key you're in. So like literally you learn this one little trick and every time you grab that chord, you've got some noodle notes. Okay, this is magic stuff, friends, but you gotta dig in. I can only lead you there. Now, if some of this stuff's going over your head, which I know it is on some, for some of you folks, you gotta get those basics down. And I give that to you for free, friends. The very first link below, yourguitarstage.com slash 30 is, will lead you to 
the Unstoppable Guitar System Standard. This is a course that over a half a million, I said that right, 500,000 people have been through already and it has massively changed the way that they think about music and I'm giving that to you for free. Same course that I would charge way over a thousand bucks for here personally if we did it one-on-one, -on -one, okay? That's free for you. Something else is coming up, more free stuff. I'm doing a huge broadcast on my biggest hacks, my biggest guitar hacks, on September the 26th, I'm also giving away this beautiful guitar along with a total of $35,000, $3,500, eventually we'll be doing $35,000, $3,500 worth of giveaways on September the 26th, 2020, and that will include guitars, amps, uh, guitar lessons, all sorts of stuff. It'll be a four hour event and it's absolutely free. We'll make sure to put the link for that in the description of this video as well. Uh, otherwise, you will definitely wanna subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to keep up with all the stuff that we give away and all the stuff that we do. So as we're, as we're talking about it right now, and don't go anywhere because I got something else for you. Uh, after you click the like button there, friends, please click subscribe, hit the notification bell, uh, hit all vids, you know the, the whole enchilada. Leave your comments below, all that good stuff. If you would like to get into the Unstoppable Guitar System and you are on mobile right now, text me and I will get you set up because I know it's hard to do on your phone. So text me. Text this number, 833-744-0154 and type to me free, F-R-E-E. -E. I'll know what that means because I just said it and uh, I'll get you started inside of the Unstoppable Guitar System uh, standard, absolutely free today. All right, my friends, I'm here to help you. Please let me know how I can do that. I'm very passionate about playing guitar. I'm very passionate about helping the world, and I want to help you play guitar. So I'm here for you. All right, I'm out of here. See ya.